Daniel Hernandez, better known as the rapper Takashi69, rose to fame through his viral songs on SoundCloud. However, the rapper quickly established himself as a villain in the scene. In his short career, Takashi69 captured mass attention with an escalating series of controversies. He became a master at sparking outrage and using it to gain popularity. Although when it came to sentencing the troll prince of hip-hop, he sang like a bird and made some wild claims while doing so. Welcome to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. I'm your host, Johnny Rogers. And if you happen to be new here, we cover all things Hollywood and celebrities. So if you don't want to miss another daily video from us, make sure you tap that subscribe button to join our notification squad. Plus, we want to know what you're looking forward to the most when the lockdown is over. And while you ponder that, let's get right into today's list of the top 10 things Takashi69 was caught lying about. In at number 10, his health. Last year, Takashi69 pleaded guilty to a series of gang robberies and shootings. He then cooperated with authorities by testifying against his former associates in the gang Nine Trade Gangsta Bloods, which included fellow inmate Kuda B. Danny's lawyer argued that because he has asthma, this gave him a heightened vulnerability to the recent virus outbreak. The judge, Paul Engelmeyer, who sentenced Takashi, agreed, saying that the pandemic presented extraordinary and compelling reasons for a compassionate release of Mr. Hernandez, who he wrote in his order on Thursday, no longer will present a meaningful danger to the community if at liberty. Although he may want to rethink his actions on that release, coincidentally Kuda B had pleaded with the judge that his asthma put him at risk and upon release he posted a video of him partying, like with a ton of other people. No social distancing whatsoever. So you know it's only a matter of time before Takashi starts inviting people over to his home confinement. He's always been one to act wild for the attention and I don't think he's going to turn this opportunity down. In at number 9, he will fight you. Danny liked to poke and make fun of people endlessly. Many of his closest friends though were were once his enemies and many of his enemies were once his closest friends. Almost always a first interaction with him was remembered as negative. Every day he would find someone on social media, leave nasty comments, and then dare them to fight him. Then when they ran into him in person, he disarmed them with kindness. Despite his gang image, Danny wasn't threatening at all in real life. It's just one of those things where in order to be heard, his bark had to be louder than everyone else. Although according to reports, when it comes down to fighting, he puts his tail between his legs. Danny would often quash internet beefs and explain that it was all just a misunderstanding. Also, this is not me encouraging you to get in a fight with him. You just should never do that ever, with anyone for that matter. In at number eight, his ethnicity. Danny's biological father had abandoned the family when Danny was in the third grade. His mother, who was born in Mexico, told him that his adoptive Puerto Rican father was actually his biological dad. Danny eventually learned the truth about his stepfather, but he continued to describe himself as half Puerto Rican, half Mexican. Because they were so close, Danny referred to him as his real father. And in early 2010, when Danny was 13, his adoptive father was shot and killed outside their apartment on a busy street in the middle of the day. He left to go to the grocery store and invited Danny along, but Danny decided to stay home. The crime was actually never even solved. Then while Daniel was in court, his actual biological father suddenly appeared. His father even attempted to raise his hand and address the court, but Judge Paul Engelmeyer rejected the request. He then said, it's way too late to show and speak on his behalf. You squandered that right many years ago. In at number seven, his gangster image. Although his name is now synonymous with the Nine Trey Bloods, Danny wasn't always part of a gang. That being said, it was his close friendship with gang member Seiko Billy that tied his name to the organization. When he linked up with members of the Bloods to film a music video for what would be his breakthrough hit, Gummo, it was there that 6 9 met shoddy born Kifano Jordan, who would then become his manager and guide him into the gang life. During his questioning, Hernandez was asked repeatedly to break down his hit song Gummo. He said that after the success of the music video, he knew the formula that he would have to follow, which was essentially representing a gang image. This included everything from using actual gang members in his videos, weapons, and even lyrics meant to provoke violence with rival gangs. Following the release of his next song with the gang, he was made an official member and sent all of the greetings. Although he admitted in court that he was never actually initiated into the gang. In at number six, Cardi B. When the judge asked Daniel further questions about his involvement with the gang and this formula that he discovered, he was caught again in another lie. The judge asked him, you knew Cardi B had made music videos with blood members in the background of her, right? To which Daniel replied that he didn't pay attention. He says that while moments before admitting that he knew that Cardi was a member of the gang. So right there, you know that he was lying to save face. He was either trying to protect a relationship with Cardi B, even though they didn't really have one, or most likely he was trying to preserve his claims of coming up with the gang music video blueprint, which we all know isn't true. Many rappers over the years have used the gang image to elevate their careers and Danny 
just took it a little too far. In at number five, hired a hitman. Another Snitch Nine lie is that he put out a hit on the rapper Chief Keith. A hit would then imply that he wanted the man dead, but during his court proceedings, he described offering $20,000 to an associate named Kuda to shoot at which is the key word here, shoot at him. This is all because the Chicago rapper Chief Keith and Danny had exchanged words online and by phone. The key reason to point out this lie is due to how ego-driven he is with gang violence and before being arrested, often liked to take credit for it. In the end, what actually happened was Kuda knew where Chief Keith was and when close by, he shot his gun in the air one time. I'm sure that scared him, but it's far from the gang boasting that he did afterwards. He also admitted that he only paid his friend 10 grand to do this. So he lied to his friend as well. In at number four, his rap persona. His friends actually still call him Danny because behind the scenes, that's who he really is. In 2015, Danny's girlfriend got pregnant. Having already lost two fathers himself, he was determined to stay and help raise his child. But living in an apartment with five other people with no education and a minimum wage job made things feel hopeless. He needed to make a lot of money and fast. That's when he decided to become a rapper. Danny had not previously shown much interest in rap music and he was not even a natural talent, but he did have the attitude down pat. He'd seen a big response on social media whenever he attacked people in the comment section and he sensed that this could be transformed into a larger audience. Andrew Trife Drew Green, who directed the Gummo music video, Video, spoke out about his change and said that when he witnessed his first face tattoo, he knew that there was no turning back. Just a few months before, 6 9 had still been Danny the Deli Clerk with no face tattoos, black hair, and just dreams of making it big. Then came the rainbow hair dye job, then the dozens of tattoos, then came the full Takashi 6 9 that we see today. In at number three, signed with Birdman. A while back, 6 9 hopped on Instagram to reveal that he had signed a record deal with Birdman worth $15 million. The caption reads, just signed to Birdman, Rich Gang, 15 million, February 23rd. Following this post, XXL Magazine reached out to Birdman's label to confirm the legitimacy of this deal. According to a rep for the Cash Money Records founder, 6 ix 9 did not sign a deal with Birdman, and they also went on to say that Takashi is known to troll on his Instagram. One time, he even claimed that he signed a $7 million deal with the Illuminati, and in reality, he was just meeting with a lawyer. Right around that time, though, he was reportedly gearing up for the release of his debut mixtape, so all of this this hype around him signing or not signing would put eyes on his release date, which is probably the February 23rd. Smart marketing, but not if you get ratted out. In at number two, the Gummo Beat. Pierre Bourne is probably most famous for producing Playboy Cardi's Magnolia, but he actually should be known for producing the Gummo Beat. The beat, however, was originally meant for the rapper Trippy Red. Although Danny would claim Trippy had given it to him as a gift, and Trippy would later claim it was stolen. All of the beef over the beat took a bizarre turn of events when, in court, Takashi said that Gummo was actually a diss track about Trippy Red, who he then proceeded to expose as a gang member along with multiple other members of the Nine Trey Bloods. So to draw attention away from him stealing the beat, he throws the guy he stole from underneath the bus. That's messed up. Pierre did end up siding with Trippy Red and publicly called out Danny for stealing the beat, making it a diss track and then accepting compensation for it. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, his age. This one has to be our number one spot because him lying about his age let him get away with so many crimes. In 2015, Danny was 18 years old and he traveled with another rapper named Taekwon Anderson to a trap house in Harlem and they were there to shoot footage for a new video. Instead, the two ended up making a series of sex tapes, one showing a nude young girl laying across their laps. The video was then posted to Instagram and Danny was tagged in it and then he then reposted it to his own account. Then the NYPD were knocking at his door. Danny admitted that it was him in the video and that he had posted it to social media. The police then informed him that the girl was 13 years old and her mother had seen the video and reported it to the police. Danny was then arrested and he spent the next few months in Rikers Island Jail. His lawyer was able to work out a deal where Danny apologized to the victim via a letter, got his GED, and then just did some community service. He served no extra jail time and when asked about it, he lied multiple times. He claimed that he was only 17, which he wasn't, and that he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, which is untrue as well. He went there to shoot a video. And that has been the top 10 things Takashi69 was caught lying about. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our editing team for making me look so good. If you enjoyed this video, then please show us some love here by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, don't forget to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on this list. And for more videos like this one, make sure you tap that playlist when it pops up from top 10 beyond the screen. My name is Johnny Rogers saying until next time, stay classy. Then the rainbow hair dye job, then the dozens of tattoos, then came the full on Takaka. 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 Last but certainly not certainly not late. Certainly better certainly late.